Hey, what's going on there folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this finally Friday, June 16th, 2023. It's about 10.51 a.m. here along the West Coast. Latest quake shows a 4.8 into the Tonga region, also a 2.8 over here around the Chile area. South America region, uh, definitely seeing a little bit of uptick in activity here across the Tonga region. Following yesterday's large earthquake, of course, 7.2, relatively deep there at 167 kilometers uh, into the subduction zone of the Tonga Trench. Now, uh, if you think about it, right, all that deeper movement, this is very typical. I kind of chat about this a lot in any subduction zone level. Deeper activity adding further strain up into the regions. Um, and that's exactly the picture that's being painted here over the last 24 hours. Deep earthquake here shallower earthquake activity back along the trench level that's where we're seeing a pretty good swarm of activity um, defaulted around 10 kilometers or so well up above the 7.2 from yesterday uh, this little swarm of activity kicking up here mostly fours and fives but we did have a six pointer build up here as well overnight about one o'clock in the morning so uh, strain is very high in this area deeper movement again will trigger much sometimes much larger activity upstream uh, but in this case i'm not for certain if that's what we're going to see either way a, uh, a pretty good uptick in movement here across the tonga area uh, up on the upper levels here of the subduction zone region new zealand still waiting to catch up here uh, i still think the further that uh, we continue to see activity here north and south of the region, the larger this activity will be across New Zealand region. Let me uh, bring up the GeoNet servers here, just give a quick glance, see what's going on. Stand by for a second, five hours ago, 2.8. That's at least for the ones that are uh, being felt. I'm not gonna go into all the super small microquakes because just like along any major plate boundary, there's always earthquakes. Look at the earthquake drums, there's that seven pointer from yesterday there, uh, just north of New Zealand, around the Tonga area, Tonga Trench, that's a deep earthquake. Uh, aside from that, most of the movement here overnight and the last, uh, generally last 24 hours is relatively non-existent. One little spike of an earthquake down here, local to this seismic, uh, seismograph station around Deep Cove, that's a, looks like a small microquake. So watching this area. Um, also one thing I noticed up here, uh, along with this, movement um, the deep activity yesterday the subsequent shallower activity uh, following that deep quake we're getting a little bit more deeper movement activity kicking up here into the Fiji region Tonga Trench but this one is super deep 541 kilometers deep there for a 4.8 in the last hour uh, so this could be a little trend that we're looking at uh, that it's possible that deeper movement quake there that large deeper movement quake opened up uh, enough strain and uh, pressure in this area to see this kind of bounce back and forth that's what we see quite a bit actually in this region deeper movement shallower activity deeper movement shallower activity that's uh very common in this area so we'll continue to watch this could see uh um you know not out of the questions see maybe another six or so something maybe a little bit larger there's always that possibility up here uh following this type of setup so we'll watch the tonga trench kermadec trench of course, New Zealand, you know, it's down there along the plate boundary and it's going to catch up here eventually. All right, further to the west, uh, most of this activity looks like that was from earlier this morning. Uh, Japan region got a uh, 4.9 just off the coast here of Tokyo, a little bit closer to Tokyo. Uh, was a 4.4, 71 kilometers deep. So watching this area. Uh, potentially for some movement um, let's see what we got here on the EMSC globe still relatively quiet if you think about it this is a very absent of earthquake activity far as uh, twos and threes and whatnot go we're seeing a three-pointer on the Java trench area that's gonna be this earthquake right here along the plate boundary nothing big uh, just a little bit of movement it looks like for the most part the activity is well south here into the Tonga region uh, and also well south into the South America region uh, where we're seeing a little bit of cluttering going on here across the Chile area 2.8 coming in right now let's see what we got as far as uh, larger scale movement goes it looks like um, 
Oh, yesterday they had that 5.2, uh, a couple other fours going on here across the South America region. But again, there's some other smaller quakes mixed in into that a cluster of activity here. So we'll watch that for some movement, deeper and shallower activity taking the, their turns back, bouncing back and forth here in the Peru Chile Trench. Around the Puerto Rico area, scattered, well, a little bit of activity up around the Puerto Rico Trench, but for the most part, scattered out across a broad area around the Puerto Rico region, twos and threes. The last one, a 3.4 in that area. Also a little bit of movement here into the Middle America Trench. Um, from yesterday, Let's see if we got anything new popping up here. Doesn't look like it. All these rings are older movement quakes up into the to the Alaska region. See what we got up there. Brewing anything brewing up here? Looks like a little bit of activity from this morning. A 4.2 kicking off here in the Norton Sound. Not for certain which fault system that is on, but uh, it's away from uh, the big one up here. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Also some activity kicking up into the Aleutian Trench region just after midnight of 4.6. Far as the states go, lower 48 here. Looks like um, well, a little bit of movement across the Washington area. Not a whole lot going on though today. Looks like for the most part, maybe even Yellowstone looks like they're swarming slightly or at least a little bit of activity. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone seismograph stations here. Uh, stand by for a second, there we go. Let's see here, not really seeing too much. Looks like maybe a little clutter over here within the last couple hours. Um, could be a start of a swarm, but very localized to this station here. This is the uh, Maple Creek area of Yellowstone National Park. Notice these uh, signatures here, indicative of some earthquake activity there across the region. Some of that movement is showing up across Holmes Hill, uh, but this is all generally microquake. USGS reporting a fraction of the earthquakes here. Uh, mostly, um, well, some, definitely mostly smaller microquakes, but there's a lot more here uh, than what's being shown on the this catalog uh, map. All right, uh, Northern California, most of the activity here from, uh, well, one from yesterday, it looks like. 3.1, also 1.9 earlier this morning. Cascadia subduction zone, still showing some activity up there. Bay Area of Northern California, quiet. And as we look down south, Southern California, awfully quiet as well. It's been a little on the low side as far as the multitude of quakes here recently across Southern California. Further to the east, Texas and Oklahoma, a little spotty movement out there. New Madrid seismic zone, seen a 2.0 yesterday and uh, one earthquake from yesterday as well into the North Carolina region. But for the most part, things are relatively stable out there across the eastern portion of the country. Uh, let's take a look at the earthquake 3D globe and see what we have. Missing anything out here? Doesn't look like it. Hawaii. Not swarming too much, just some typical activity out there. Looks like around the uh, Pahala area. Let's zoom in here real quick. Yep, right around the Pahala area, 2.1 the latest there. Kilauea Volcano still continuing to erupt, but flowing smoothly with, the, uh, with that uh, eruption status there. Not creating any type of earthquake activity. Uh, one earthquake there from yesterday, that was a 5.0 in the Bangladesh border region, India area. And further to the west around Turkey and the Mediterranean Sea. Looks like we did have a 4.9 up here in France. That's a little, somewhat of a larger magnitude out here. Looks like it is around some populated regions. It was felt uh, according to the uh, Did You Fill It reports here. Specifically around the epicenter there of France, some moderate to strong shaking being reported. That was from the earthquake that came in. Um, well, let's see, when did exactly did that come in here? 9.30 in the morning, my time here, so a couple hours ago. Uh, 
out here around the Bay of Biscay area, looks like. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Not too too familiar with the France area in terms of uh, earthquake activity, but I'm kind of curious. I want to see what's going on out there. We're going to go 4.5 and above. Just going to look back here over the last... Oh, they're not going to show every single earthquake, but we'll go back to the last one th year uh, 1,000. Specifically around the France area. Let's see, where was that one located at? Okay. I just want to see what's going on out here. Of course, closer you get over here around the mountain ranges, the plate boundaries. Obviously, there's going to be some bigger earthquake activity, but I just want to see what's out here as far as larger scale movement goes. Now, this is 4.5 and above. There's today's 4.9 in France. About five kilometers deep. Looks like historically seen a little bit of activity here uh 2019 that one's way over here though to the south and east specifically around this region though 2005 2001 seen a five pointer 4.5 2019 doesn't look like they get too big out here um, and they shouldn't it really shouldn't be a any major large earthquakes that take place uh well away from the plate boundary but it looks like we do see a little bit of movement out here across france including uh, a 5.2 back for 2005. All right, uh, let's see what else do we have here. I think that's about it. Um, Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet for now. Not really seeing anything showing up here. Uh, maybe a little two-pointer from the EMSC that's coming into that uh, plate boundary out in the Atlantic. All right, space weather activity. Goodness, that was kind of crazy last night, kicking up a uh, unexpected G3 class storm. Uh, we had the KP index reach above the sixth level. Uh, roars were visible across uh, certain regions. It was unexpected. Um, Kevin here on the solarham.net site mentions that it was from uh, a coronal hole solar wind stream reached earth and is currently moving past our planet above 650 km per second with the help of predominantly south pointing bz components uh, space weather mentions right here that it's a cir which is uh don't really talk about that too much do we uh, in fact they mentioned here many sky watchers have never heard of cirs kind of interesting right uh, kicked up G2 class storm uh, last night earth lit up like a Christmas tree with auroras at both poles a co-rotating interaction region so that CIR hit our planet's magnetic field uh, the display in New Zealand was one for the ages so uh, it looks like that's down into the uh, New Zealand area absolutely beautiful image Uh, these CIRs are basically like um, oh let's see here what these guys are talking about I'm trying to think of a good easy way to explain this so it looks like uh, typically it's where these solar wind streams flow um, or blow through slower moving streams, creating a, a stirrup, so to speak. Solar wind plasma piles up in these regions, producing shock light, shock like structures that mimic CME. So similar to, um, man, I'm trying to think something that maybe like in the water or something where you're, uh, creating a little pattern of intenseness just by making a wave in a small confined area and that small confined area was centered right around the earth area so this was definitely not expected but um you know i don't recall the last time my cir was produced out here but uh, we just happened to be directly in the right path for it to happen and uh, of course that's how this uh, unexpected activity occurs so a combination of that and also i believe there with the uh, solar hole that was facing earth um, 
couple days ago. It's going to be number 12. It's well past over here on the western limb of the sun now, but it was centered a little bit further uh, around the Earth-Sun plane. So that's kind of what we uh, witnessed here last night. Current conditions, though, looks like we're calming down slightly uh, across the higher latitudes there, the polar regions. Expected back to minimal conditions here uh, tonight and for the, at least the foreseeable future until something else pops up. We did have a little bit of M flare activity overnight as well, reaching into the M uh, 1.0, it looks like, similar to what we've seen yesterday as well um, from a solar region here. Let's see, this is put out uh, today couple different sunspots here on the eastern limb of the sun some very bright areas and some uh, very large sunspots show you guys here real quick most recent image gonna be right here uh, I think it's noteworthy to watch this one down here this is uh, looking fairly complex it looks like it's growing a little bit this one's degrading uh, and this is a massive sunspot region but uh, last night Last night it was a little bit more complex. Today it looks, eh, it's kind of hard to say, but we'll watch this specific area. It does look like maybe there's a little bit of closeness in the proximity of the magnetic fields in that sunspot that could spark up a little bit of flaring. But I think the main threat's gonna be uh, from the sunspot region down here, 3336 or 3335 potentially. We'll watch those. Uh, looks like M flare at 30% chance, C flare at 99% chance, X flare around 5%. And uh, these are rotating and uh, turning towards the Earth. We'll continue to watch those for some um, further flaring. Uh, Storm Prediction Center today paints a, a little bit different picture compared to yesterday. Uh, seen some damage out there around a couple towns in Oklahoma. Uh, that get, got hit by uh, some tornadoes. Unfortunately, uh, it is that time of year and uh, it's always good to take heed to the weather uh, when it changes like this. Today though, 2% chance for tornado possibilities. It looks like around Colorado Springs, eastward into portions of Kansas. Let's see, tornado threat. Looks like the main threat today could be some uh, wind and hail events nothing big uh 15 chance for severe possibility any of those thunderstorms that do develop could produce some large hail tomorrow uh, back around the oklahoma area this this covers a large portion of oklahoma we'll watch this for tomorrow see if they uh, enhance anything but it looks like the main threat's going to be some wind and hail uh goodness within that hatched area Alrighty, folks, I'm going to jump off here. It is Friday, so got a somewhat of a busy day. Get a few things done today. It's supposed to be 100 and, oh man, 102, I think, today. 102 where I live here in Northern California, just outside of Chico, California here. But, uh, goodness, it's going to be a hot one. And then it's supposed to be uh, a little hotter tomorrow. Well, not a little hotter, but about the same temperature before we cool back down uh, drastically from a system that's coming down out of the north low pressure system right now we got the high pressure influence here along the west coast it's going to be the in the orange pattern but here we go look at that a deep deepening uh, low pressure system here bringing rain into the pacific northwest and much cooler temperatures here across california i think we're supposed to be dipping down into the 70s here if I remember right, um, yeah, on Monday, 76, that's that's uh, unusual for this time of year. Middle of June, getting close to the end of June here in a few days. Either way, welcome relief here from the heat for uh, a little bit. I'm not seeing any massive high pressure buildup uh, anytime in the future. All right, folks, have a good one. Stay safe. We will catch you guys back out here a little bit later on. Take care.